The earlier Saturn, the Saturn I, has completed its flight schedule of 10 firings, scoring an unprecedented success by proving 100% successful in all flights. Engine control was tested by gimbling the engines during firing. For the first Apollo Saturn 1B flight, this consisted of the command module, the propulsion module, the weight simulating the lunar module. Two motion picture cameras were prepared for installation on the Saturn first stage to provide a permanent visual record of the separation sequence of the second stage from the first stage in flight. This first launch vehicle was programmed to perform a suborbital lob shot with the Apollo Command and Propulsion Modules as the payload. They were to be lofted to an altitude of approximately 300 miles by the two booster stages. As the firing time approached, 190,000 gallons of liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, and kerosene were poured into the tanks. The firing team made final checks and evaluations. Four, three, two, one, ignition. The Apollo Saturn 1B lifted slowly at first, then doubled, then redoubled its speed.
Onboard camera showed the successful separation of the first stage. The burn of the small solid rockets to seat the liquid propellant in the second stage. And second stage ignition. The cameras were attached to the first stage and a system was installed to eject them at the appropriate time. Soon after ejection, spring-loaded flaps open to stabilize the cameras and to slow their descent. They re-enter the atmosphere at 7,900 miles an hour. The attached parachute and the balloon produce drag to reduce the capsule impact velocity to prevent capsule damage. After the first stage burns and drops away, the second stage burns for seven and one half minutes. Then its attitude controls tilts the payload to the proper re-entry position. This stage is kicked aside and the command and propulsion modules coast over the apex of the flight path. Small rockets fire to seat the liquid propellants and the propulsion module engine ignites to increase the re-entry speed. The engine reignites to check the restart capability and further increase the speed. Attitude rockets then turn the command module for re-entry. The propulsion module is kicked aside and the Apollo continues toward the thicker air at a speed of nearly 18,000 miles an hour. This mission was planned to provide a major test of the Apollo heat shield at a high re-entry heating rate and to demonstrate the operation of the propulsion module system and other spacecraft functions, including the recovery system. The cover of the Apollo separates, and the main parachutes open at two miles above the water to land the test payload in the ocean without damage. The Apollo Saturn 1B had performed its planned mission. This is the film that was taken at Cape Kennedy on January 10th. The Apollo in place on pad 34, and the astronauts seen here suiting up. Gus Grissom, 41 years old. Roger Chaffee, 32, newly promoted to Navy Lieutenant Commander. Grissom, wiry, tough, but, and Ed White, 36 years old in the center there, our first man to walk in space. The Apollo 1 patch that will now never be worn, designed by Roger Chaffee himself, who was proud of it. And indeed, he caused the flight to be renamed. When the space agency was unable to decide on a name, Chaffee, Grissom, and White went ahead and called it Apollo 1, and we think forced the space agency to rename it at that time. Ed White, the navigator, here working with a sextant and telescope at the guidance and navigation station of Apollo 1, now charred by flame. Hey. The purpose of the flight of Apollo 7 could be stated very simply. Prove that the spacecraft command and service modules would function properly in space, long enough to carry men to the moon and back. Flight. 25, 5, 5, 3, 
and S-4B stage were separated. The question now was whether the astronauts could turn their spacecraft around and control it to the degree required for future physical link-ups with equipment in space. For this, too, would have to be done in the lunar flight. Something that will not be seen in the lunar flight or in any other forthcoming Apollo mission were the panels at the top of the S-4B stage. They will simply be jettisoned in the future, but they drew comment in Apollo 7. Looks like you're looking at a four-jawed angry alligator. The following day, Apollo 7 burned its spacecraft propulsion system for the first two times in the mission and returned to its four-jawed alligator, which was now angrier than ever. Apollo 7, Houston, uh, how close are you now? In this maneuver, Apollo 7 had accomplished the first rendezvous of the program, and in so doing had proven capable of meeting still another requirement for lunar flight. One, six, one, eight. Then, as we were to see in some of the most dramatic film ever returned from space, the crew would settle down to a weightless life in a spacecraft with four times more room than Gemini. The equipment and systems required to sustain men's lives, to guide and control and propel the spaceship, to provide electric power, to communicate with those on Earth, would time and again prove their mettle. The propulsion system, for example, was burned eight times, and it behaved perfectly every time. Apollo 7, through the medium of television, we could actually see them in space for the first time and become better acquainted with weightless life aboard a spacecraft. I can read it now, just a minute. This from that uh, lovely Apollo something. You guys should write Apollo it. Apollo Rome. I have top everything. The astronauts became accustomed to their home high atop everything. They even recorded the preparation of a drink for a meal. October 22, 1968, Apollo 7 began its final revolution, the 163rd. At approximately 259 hours and 39 minutes after liftoff, the spacecraft propulsion system was burned for the final time, and Apollo 7 headed home to Earth. It had exceeded the time required for a flight to the moon and back. At approximately 259 hours and 39 minutes after liftoff, the spacecraft propulsion system was burned for the final time, and Apollo 7 headed home to Earth. percent successful. We have seen the site where five F-1 rocket engines, each one as powerful as all eight engines of the Saturn combined, 
will be clustered together to make the advanced Saturn missile. Looks good. I can see Wally Hamlet now. And Don has a smile on his face, and there's Walt. Okay, what's the next one?